Good morning. We are at the Garden Education Center for the uh, Master Gardeners of San Mateo County and San Francisco Counties. It is April of 2019. My name is Nancy and this is Terry. And we're standing in the middle of a garden of cover crops. The reason we're here is because we had some difficulties with Bermuda grass taking over. And after we consulted with several different experts in different fields, we thought we would like to try this method for helping to not eradicate but control the Bermuda grass. And Terry will tell you a little bit more of the details. Well, yes, we're very excited about um, this project here. And what we've done is uh, we put in, I believe, eight different cool season cover crops, uh, legumes as well as uh, deep rooted uh, crops. So we have uh, Austrian winter peas, fava beans, vetch, crimson clover, or I think red clover, bursine clover, uh, phacelia, um, what did I forget? I think that's, that's about it. Yeah. Um, oh, and did I say daikon radish? Daikon radish, which has a very deep tap root. So what we're trying to do here is uh, build soil structure. This was a rather neglected piece of land with very compacted soil and uh, the cover crops are putting a nice deep uh, root mass into the soil. Now that the winter cover crops are ready to harvest, we're going to go ahead and cut them down, leave the roots in place to decompose, and then we're going to put in a warm season cover crop. So we're thinking of using sunflower, safflower, uh, some, um, uh, maybe a few stands of uh, we're going to put in, um, what else, uh, garbanzo beans um, and a couple other uh, warm season cover crops. Some will be legumes, some will be, uh, we're going to put in some teff too, which has a big root mass. So our idea is to get a lot of carbon into the soil. Um, all, and the cover crops will shade the ground, therefore making it less hospitable to the Bermuda grass. And we're hoping over time to outcompete the Bermuda grass open the soil up by building really nice soil structure and Bermuda grass that does come in we hope to be able to pull <laughs> out root stolen and all so we're we can slowly start controlling the Bermuda grass. So this is a fava bean plant which we planted as a winter cover crop. It is now coming to the end of its life cycle. As you can see the discoloration on the leaves and if you look closely in some places there are black aphids. Um, this is normal for the end of the plant's life. As plants get weaker they do get attacked by disease and insects and that's what the insects and disease job is to do is to clean up. They also have these fava beans, which are edible, but some people do have a sensitivity to them and should not eat them, so check before you eat. This is a phacelia. It's a beautiful little cover crop. Very good for benefic bringing beneficial insects into the garden. Produces a nice little root mass to leave in the ground. And definitely a pretty addition to uh, more cool season cover crop. So here we have red clover which as you can see is a beautiful plant and it lends a lot of color to the cover crop so it's just fun to see. But it is also a nitrogen fixing plant which means if we picked up the roots they should have little nodules with pockets of nitrogen in it. So when we chop and drop and, and take the top part of the plant off the bottom the little nodules will be there to add nitrogen to the soil. This is a daikon radish. Daikon radish uh, does produce a pretty uh, deep taproot, so the benefit of it is opening up the soil and leaving a lot of organic matter in the soil to break down. As you notice, this one is flowering nicely and has produced quite a few seeds. With cover crops, you really want to be careful about seeds because some cover crops can become a weed problem. So uh, now is definitely the time to start cutting this back and chopping it up and putting it into your compost pile, leaving the roots in place.